Shiba Shiba, yeah! <laughs> one of the most valuable cars in the world. And right behind it, there's from Ferrari. Uh, four people. Rolls-Royce 20 horse. It won the car with the most opulent back home. Isn't that pretty amazing? You know, you wonder, can you actually use these cars? Well, the quick answer is uh, yes. Oh, uh, look at that. A Knox. Look at that. That 1902 car. There we go. Now it's slowly down. 1903 Knox. Interestingly, that is an air cooled car. You all thought the Volkswagen Beetle was the first air cooled car. Well, no. It was done in 1903. Jaguar E Type 3.8. A uh, roadster, quintessentially English. What an amazing design! It came out in 1961, followed by two, not one, but two 300 SL Gullwings. It's named the Gullwing because it's got that door. You can see the door on the second car that's coming through opens up uh, like the wings on a uh, seagull, and so it was named the Gullwing. That was the oh, very well. uh, Speaking of Ferraris, maybe you want to tell us about Dinos. Yes, Dino 246 GT. Look at that beautiful model. Two variants of the Dino, the Dino 206, only 152 made, and Dino 246 GT and GTS for Spider. About three and a half thousand of those made. Beautiful colour. You know, that Dino, the reason why it's called a Dino and it's not a Ferrari, uh, Enzo Ferrari, who started Ferrari, uh, his son, unfortunately prematurely died when he was very young at the age of less than 25 and so he dedicated a whole series of cars to his son with his son's name and uh, this is one of those cars this is a uh, uh, you know, people often refer to it as a ferrari dino but the ferrari dino but the truth is it's actually just called a dino beautiful beautiful lines one of the prettiest i know small but it is beautiful now, one of the things that's important to say is in the world of five, and he has kept it ever since. Original paint, original interior. It is a true time work car. The Lotus Turbo S3 in white with white. These did. You've got to put your minds back to 1913. Imagine this car coming through this village in 1930. What an imposing automobile, the big four-door saloon. Look at that huge, long bonnet that it's got. This was the fastest, the best Bentley that was in existence at the time. This is the most expensive car, K120 Roadster. This is uh, called a Jaguar XK120. Why is it called a 120? Well, believe it or not, this is a car from uh, 19... Beautiful car. Beautiful. <laughs> 120 miles per hour. It was a true sporting car, two seats, and uh, this one has been sort of modified to exactly yeah. how you would have been raced in the 1950s. The outside feels the most, the small the aero screen. It sort of looks fast, even if it's not moving, it already looks fast. The Jaguar XK120 Roadster. Right, aren't we now? It's all happening, Max. Jaguar e Type is staying uh, with the e Type after the uh, XK120. There was the Jaguar e Type. We saw one earlier uh, on. Uh, they were sort of devolving from their Le Mans win with that straight six Jaguar engine. Point a straight six. It was presented in 1961. Made unbelievable ways. Everyone was astounded by the design and the look of this car. No one had seen a car like the Jaguar E Type until it was. Ah, 1903, Berlier, 20 horse. Now, don't be fooled, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very fast and very powerful car. 1903, don't forget. It's actually, if you look at it, a racing car for the road. It looks very formal, but it's actually a very, very powerful car and capable of high speeds. And if you look, in 1903, it was still using chains, like a bicycle chain, uh, to power the car on the uh, back wheels. The uh, 1903. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
again in the 1930s. And this is in Aston Martin. The Malta. You know, the Malta 24 hours is such a pain race. Well, this is the car that Aston Martin brought to the Mar to compete for the 24 hour races. And uh, as uh, many of you know, the Mar is a very long endurance race. It's 24 hours of driving. Uh, but at Aston Martin at the time, well, they would drive the cars to the race. How about that? Drive the car all the way to the race. Do the 24 hour race and then drive back. And this was... Don't drink water, don't drink water. Don't drink water. Don't drink water. Don't drink water. Yes, it is a pickup truck. This chassis was actually damaged in a fire. It was recovered by... Uh, and uh, it was abandoned. And you saw the Bentley 8 meter earlier on. This is a big and uh, powerful machine. Well, this car was actually damaged in a fire. And it was repurposed as a uh, pickup truck. And uh, it was used to move spare parts around the, uh, the factory. I mean, I don't think huh? you've ever seen this is the only Bentley pickup truck that is... <laughs> This car was designed for Alpine trials. It was designed for competition. This is the last competition Rolls-Royce that was actually ever made. And you'll notice one quick thing. It was designed for sporty driving on the Alpine passes. Well, when it goes by, you'll see it's got a cutaway door. Well, the door's cutaway tire. So royal, so regal. Rolls-Royce Phantom 2. Ah. Well, we said it before, it was so fast that so we decided to bring the car back. This is the famous Ferrari 125 S. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Don't pass for the car. Thank you, guys. This is the first Ferrari in the world. This is where Ferrari history started. Fucking hell. In, uh, in uh, Italy. Trust me, this car does not come out of the, of the Ferrari factory very often. So to see it in real life, for a Ferrari enthusiast like myself, to be able to look at it, touch it, see it, or well, maybe not touch it, but even just be around it, it's uh, really quite an emotional thing. I mean, this is really part of Ferrari history. This is where it all started, and it was used for racing. Don't forget, Enzo Ferrari was all about racing, and so his first car, of course, was a racing car, and that's what he did. Absolutely, Max. Should we have a few words? First of all, Casper, nice to see you judging today, so well done for that. First time. Fabio, will you tell us some words, please, about Ferrari? about Ferrari Classico, but in particular about 125S, where this all started. No, and, and sorry for before, but the emotion was so high, so now we want to just make another two. So, thank you very much. So, uh, for, for us, for Ferrari, 125, and he's the, 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 the real beginning of our lives. He's representing something well for that. Ferrari Party, I'm proud of you. Party, party, party. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And then we in Ferrari Classic and all the battle shows. Thank you for the applause, Vivian. I'm proud of you. Thank you for the applause. Buona fortuna, amico. Buona fortuna. We got the prize. 215 GTO. You've seen all of the cars. And that's a GTO. Good morning, Rosario. Good morning, Rosario. Good morning, Rosario. Thank you. The car that was uh, 
This is a luxury motoring from Ferrari in 1960. The unique color. Colors are very important in the world of Ferraris because you know we like to have cars that are different now. But they're not all red. Contrary to uh, <laughs> contrary to what people believe, not all Ferraris were. This was the 60s uh, Dolce Vita. This was uh, a luxury touring car from Ferrari. Congratulations on your win. I still love the colour of your car and keeps my opinion here as well. So, you awesome. know, the best Ferrari engine you can possibly get. Thank you for bringing it up. We'll see you soon. Yeah, this is uh, exactly the type of car that would race for uh, 24 hours uh, at Le Mans. Look at the size of the tank on the back so they didn't have to start very often for a racing race. Okay, might have been the best. Come on, 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 come in the 1930s, often these cars would uh, fail, but this is one of the most successful Bentley racing cars of all time. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Much more stylish, much more quiet. Isn't that just beautiful? You know, everyone thinks that Bentley always wanted to go racing, but a lot of cars were uh, used for touring. So this is a different body style, but it was a totally more comfortable. Yeah. Or sports, uh, but still with that uh, open top and just look at the size, the sheer size of the wheels, the sheer size of the car, the engine in this car. I follow me on this song. Bravo. So, the chassis of the engine is restored to exactly, exactly how it came out of the Somebody, somebody, somewhere saw this body in a barn and he decided to have a crazy project and put it back on a Bentley chassis. I mean, you cannot imagine how much work Citroen, believe it or not, it was built in I mean, have you ever seen a Citroen like this? It's so far Plenty of space, suspension goes here. It looks like a nightclub from the 70s. Green velour and leather. The roof has got this target top roof that's open. It's a prototype. It was made by a French company and it's the only one in this car. I mean, talk about uh, history. You see, it is a family affair. So perhaps you recognize this car from Mag 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 it was indeed Max, yes. Mag Magnum PI of the Magnum. Magnum PI, GTS, uh, Target Top. I tell you what, you'll never see a better 308 in your lives. It is unbelievable. Over the top. Well done, guys. Thank you so much. Here's <laughs> oh, the Mark with 75. Now, the Ferrari Enzo inspired with all that Formula One technology. Uh, a limited edition car, 499 of these cars uh, were made. And this was uh, the best of the best that Ferrari could offer in 2004-2005. Uh, limited production run, as I said to you. And look at those golden doors. V12, mid-engine, everything a Ferrari should be. And it's even red, which I love. Thank you for the door demonstration, guys. No other color for an Enzo, right, Max? No, the car first name comes after. Oh, bop, 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 bop. Now, it was into a building car like this. I mean, it was so expensive. They only made a handful of these cars. Listen, 
Exactly. You can't even hear it driving by because it is designed to make everyone travel in absolute comfort. Thank you. And look this at is such a whole thing. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's <laughs> all built by hand. True English craftsmanship. Speaking of English craftsmanship, we've got a Bristol. Maybe we'll just keep them rolling through. We've got a Bristol core, Hogan Bristol. I mean, look at the fins on the back. They were inspired by aerodynamic design. It was, after all, an airplane building company. So you can see that there's some cues from uh, the uh, airplane in normal morning. So after 18 months, they decided to stop production. And now what happens? It becomes a very desirable classic art deco body. Look at the spats over the uh, rear wheels. Isn't that absolutely magnificent? Very, very impressive. You just kind of keep on rolling through, thank you very much. Well, this is actually a company that was uh, a very advanced in the technology, uh, having uh, lubricated chassis, having fully synchronized. But there is a lot of power there. Aspect, 
we've done a huge amount of work cosmetically, so you can see carbon fibre pretty much everywhere, um, from the front bumper, bonnet, fenders. Every time I tell him to be quiet, he does this up. To, to homologate for uh, racing, this is the... We don't have...